There is a huge amount of factual information out there with regards to the new firmware from DJI and O3. Alongside that factual information, there is also a huge amount of nonsense as well and a massive amount of confusion with regards to what this new firmware is, what is affected and what it means to you. In this video, I'm going to try and explain that with regards to the DJI Avata drone, the O3 system and the original FPV system. Now, just before I jump into it, I just want to say if you find this video useful, please do make sure you are a subscriber of the channel. If you'd like to support us, there are links to Patreon as well as buy me a coffee in the description. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. I would not be able to keep making content like this without their support. Anyway, let's get on with it and let's try and clear up this whole situation. Now, among all of the new firmware this week that we had for the DJI Digital FPV system, the O3 system, there was a new firmware release for the Avata drone. This new firmware added some new functionality, including some 30 frames a second modes and 10-bit. However, it also introduced the new remote ID compliance that DJI are required to do in law in the US. This remote ID compliance means you must have your smartphone connected to your FPV goggles when using the Avata at all times with the Fly app. Now, this obviously is going to upset some people. However, it has also led to a lot of speculation and hearsay about what else it affects. I'm going to be clear up front before we move forward. This update only affects the Avata drone. Whilst all of the other bits from DJI have had firmware updates, there is no remote ID requirement on the O3 system or the DJI Digital FPV system. There is no requirement with the O3 system or the Digital FPV system to connect your smartphone before you can fly. There is no remote ID lockout. And this new remote ID compliance, again, is only for the Avata drone. Anyone telling you that it affects O3 is telling you nonsense and it is simply related to the new law that DJI has to comply with with all of their consumer drones moving forward. And whilst the Avata is the first to have this, it is going to be the same on every drone you end up buying that is like this, i.e. ready to fly off the shelf. Now, it isn't likely to affect things like this right now, which is off-the-shelf FPV drones, you are likely to see some changes to how these are sold to you, i.e. they're probably not going to come with a receiver anymore, allowing them to remain in that DIY category. But it does mean that anything that is off-the-shelf and classed as a ready-to-fly product is going to have to comply. Now, as for the Avata and what the effects are, well, it is the case that the new Remote ID firmware will lock you out from flying in the US and Canada unless you have your smartphone with the Fly app connected to your goggles. You will not be able to take off if you don't have the Fly app connected. However, this is only at this moment in time in the US and Canada. It is the case that this is required by law in the US, but it does seem that Canada has got mixed up in this as well. It might be the case that DJ AI does make this different in the future, but here and now, it is the case that both the US and Canada require the fly app to be connected to your goggles at all times, otherwise you will not be able to fly. Now, obviously, this is going to upset a lot of people, but the basic reality is DJI is required to comply in law with the new remote ID requirements, and they are going to be doing this on all their consumer drones, and the Avata is the first. Now, the reality is, on most of DJI drones, you're flying with a smartphone anyway. It's only the Avata and the FPV drone that you usually wouldn't because you're flying with the FPV goggles, and this really isn't a major issue unless you really don't want to be using the remote ID system. This firmware is not forced. You are not required to update to it. However, if you don't, you won't get the new features that it brings, such as those new 10-bit and 30 frames a second modes. As for non-US users, this does not affect you. Even if you are using the Avata with the ham file, you are not locked out from flying because of this remote ID update. If you do use the ham file, you may see the remote ID screen pop up. However, in my tests, it does not stop you flying and you are able to use your Avata just as you did before. 
Now, a little interesting thing with this new update is it does appear to be using that bonding process that DJI used for key refresh between the drone and the goggles. A while back, DJI introduced free flyaway protection with their drones, and as a result of this, you actually have to bond or bind your aircraft to your goggles in the Fly app. This isn't a linking between the two wirelessly, this is a linking of sort of the serial numbers to ensure that DJI know that that aircraft is always being used with that goggles, or on their normal drones, that aircraft is being used with that remote. As a result of this, when you use the Avata now with the new Remote ID firmware and you're using another set of goggles, so for instance, if it came with the Goggles 2 and you started using V2s, it will now give you a warning that you are going to be limited unless you rebind it to those goggles. To do that, you will need to connect it to the Fly app. However, it isn't something you're going to want to do all of the time because it can have an effect on the way DJI process it in the background, and I'm not exactly sure if there's a limit on how many times you can actually switch it. It is interesting that DJI are using this bonding process to allow them to see what aircraft and goggles is being used. It's likely to do with the serial number information that they're having to transmit as part of Remote ID, and you may see this screen pop up if you do swap the goggles that you're using. So the very basics of this is, this update for Remote ID only affects the Avata in the US and as I understand it, Canada. If you're an EU user, regardless if you're using the HAM file or not, it does not affect you. It does not affect O3, it does not affect the digital FPV system, you do not need to connect the fly app to the FPV or the O3 system before you can fly, and all of the nonsense and hearsay that you might be hearing online is largely untrue. The basics are Avata, ready to fly drones, it's not likely to come to the FPV system, there's no reason to panic, and here and now there is no reason to do anything other than to continue to fly your drones as you did before. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. I hope it's cleared up the situation. If you have found this video useful, please do make sure you do check out the links in the description to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my patrons. I would not be able to keep making content on this channel without their support. Let me know what you think in the video. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section. I will try and answer them. Stay safe and I will speak to you soon.